welcome back to the latest lecture session. In the last couple of sessions, we were talking about uh, trying to remove the suspended solids from drinking water. Uh, we were measuring that by turbidity and the principle was uh, forming bigger particles by destabilizing them and then letting them form flocks, the bigger particles and then we use sedimentation to settle them down. Even after this, there will still be some particles that are still uh, suspended or will take much more time to settle down in a sedimentation tank, right? So, what are we going to do next? We are going to look at filtration. So, let us uh, move on and look at filtration. So, what have we looked at until now in water treatment? Let us just, uh, let me just put it up. So, preliminary treatment in the terms of core screens or such and then we are going to look at coagulation and then flocculation, right? Destabilizing the particles, forming flocks and then sedimentation, right? Uh, flocculation here. So, filtration is next. I am going to filter the particles out. So, that is pretty straightforward. And again, what is the primary purpose? We are always trying to remove the suspended solids, different size of suspended solids. So, why can't I, let us say, remove the sedimentation and directly have filtration? Well, you will choke your uh, filter. Maintenance can be high, head loss will be high, but I think we will discuss this in, this, uh, in today's session. Let us get this started. Filtration, I guess. Typically, when we think of filter, we will think of, let us say, you know, this uh, size and let us say if my particle is bigger than this, then it is going to be trapped, right? This is like the plan view. I am trying to say that this is the pore size or such and this is my particle. But again, that is not the only way how filtration occurs here. Let us look at it. Again, what are we trying to do? We are trying to remove suspended particles so that the turbidity is what we want. I think turbidity was supposed to be less than 1, right? At least in Indian conditions. So, let us uh, get this done. So, depth or sand filter. We have a uh, sand filter. Okay, these are crude drawings, obviously. So, water comes in. You have sand of relatively different diameter depending upon whether it is uh, slow sand or rapid sand filter. Again, we will go back to that. So, water comes in and particles are filtered out and then water leaves the system. Typically, let us say depending upon where you have your water collection system here, right. So, depth or the sand filter, depth filter, right. So, that is what we have here as in the filtration occurs over the depth. And then surface where we use the microfiltration and ultrafiltration membranes. I think when we uh, looked at the graph that illustrated the different sizes of particles, we looked at the different kinds of filtration mechanisms that can achieve the removal of those particles. In that context, I believe we looked at this microfiltration and ultrafiltration membranes. Again, these are based on filtration at the surface. We will uh, look at this again. So, okay, this is I guess uh, a graph that I was uh, looking at. So, we have sand, we have silt, again we are looking at con conventional filtration for now, right. So, I can capture some bacteria, yes, and cysts, silt and sand and depending upon adsorption maybe some of the other particles too will be removed. For example, NOM adsorbed onto sand or such or let us say at least some particles of clay can be removed. But again, you understand the size in general though. But depending upon the type of filtration, you will be able to achieve what do we say until 0.1. But usually just above 1, that is a good enough cutoff for conventional filtration, right? 1 micrometer is the typical cutoff though you will have some removal between 0.1 and 1, removal of particles between 0.1 and 1. In general, uh, you can think of 1 as a cutoff, let us say. And 1 micrometer size particles are usually the hardest to remove by conventional filtration. We will uh, look at this or come back to this aspect. And now as you see, if I want to remove smaller particles, I need to look at microfiltration or ultrafiltration and this is what we talked about or, or when we say surface filtration, let us say, right? When we say surface filtration, it is based on the type of or the mechanism. So, you have a membrane and most of the filtration occurs on surface or, you know, pores more or less which are not uh, very deep, let us say, right? Uh, but with respect to the filtration using sand, the filtration occurs across the depth. So, that is why we say or the depth of the sand, that is why we say it is depth filtration, right? So, that is something to uh, keep in mind. Let us move on now. 
So filtration mechanism, right? Typically, as we mentioned, uh, you know, one can think of it as if it's straining, right? My pore size is uh, this big and my particle is this big. And so the particle will not fit through the pore size and it will obviously be filtered out. So that's straining. So that's but one mechanism of how uh, particles are removed. We look at the different mechanism. So depth filtration mechanism, okay. As can be seen, we are going to look at adsorption, right? Adsorption onto the media and adsorption contact mechanisms. It can be by interception. Colloid hits the media due to motion of water. Let's say my particle is out here and it's the water particle is flowing near the relevant media. This is my media and then the colloid that's coming along with the relevant water will be intercepted, let's see, interception. And diffusion, as in you have, what do we say, due to the thermal energy, the particles having their Brownian motion, well, I guess I should not have drawn it like this, maybe something like this, and they can end up, what do we say, absorbing onto the media. This is my media here, right? And this is how my particle can also be absorbed onto the media. And sedimentation as in if the particle is going through in this way, but because of the weight of the colloid or the relevant particle, it's going to come in like this and it's going to have uh, or it's going to undergo sedimentation, let's say, due to gravitational settling, right? So sedimentation also can occur, but this is within the, uh, what do we say, uh, filter, right? So interception, diffusion and sedimentation. We will look at these aspects, but these are the primary aspects other than straining. Right, we will look at these aspects. Okay, here we have a decent figure from uh, Water and Wastewater Engineering by Davis McKenzie, where you can see the relevant uh, mechanisms being illustrated. Let's see what else we have. So mechanical screening, so that's what you have, yeah? They are screened out, why? The particle size is bigger than the pore size, let's see, right? And then sedimentation, okay, you have the sedimentation instead of the particle taking this flow path, let's say the settling velocity such that in this case, is that it will come out here and settle on the relevant particles. So you see the sedimentation occurring out here, let's say. And flocculation. So again, uh, if the particles have been destabilized by flocculation or pardon me, coagulation earlier. So flocculation can take place even within the relevant uh, media. So the flocculation can be, uh, again, it's pretty representative here, but there are different kinds. It's not the only way that flocculation can occur but particles can flock together or aggregate together or aggregate because of differential velocities due to either the fluid or the relevant uh, settling velocities, right? And you can end up having flocculation here. And interception, right? So this is what we have. So water is taking the particle nearer to the relevant uh, media. This is the media. And then you see that uh, you have interception of the relevant particle on the relevant media, right? So that's something that you see here. And impaction, well, I guess depending upon the velocity and the inertial forces, sometimes, and again, this depends upon the uh, weight of the particles too, they do not change direction with the flow of water, but they uh, impact on the media and that's how you are going to have, uh, what do we say, removal of the relevant particle. So mechanical screening, sedimentation, flocculation within, interception and impaction, right? More or less, we have covered this. But again, as I mentioned earlier, Brownian motion too, but that will depend upon the type of, uh, what do we say, motion, I guess, right? This is typically for smaller particles, but we will look at this in detail. But this is a usually accepted overview of how particles can be removed. So here we have another mechanism that clearly illustrates what I wanted to mention earlier. This is from Crittenden et al. So what do we have here? You have the particle trajectory and the streamline here. Right. So what do I have here? This is the one with respect to Brownian motion, as you can see. Particles always, I mean, typically smaller particles anyway, in the context of filtration, uh, you are going to have Brownian uh, motion diffusion. So, you know, in this random motion, the particles will come and uh, what do we say, be absorbed by uh, the relevant media. This is the media, obviously. Right. And what else? So again, interception, I guess, in a way. So the water is taking the particle near the relevant media and then it's intercepted. The other one is settling rather than going out, not going out. So because of the settling velocity of the particle, it's going to take this path rather than let's say the path of water out here, right? 
So that's with respect to sedimentation, right? These are the aspects. So if you look at it, I guess interception, diffusion and sedimentation, these are the three aspects that we mentioned. And depending on how you want to nitpick, you have other aspects coming into the picture. So let me move on. So depth filtration mechanism, okay. Now that the particle has been adsorbed, that doesn't mean it's going to be removed. Some of these collisions are not going to lead to or not uh, collisions, interactions let's say, right, are not going to lead to removal. So what am I concerned with? I am concerned with the effectiveness of the contact between the media and the relevant particle. So fraction of the colloid and the media particles that result in attachment, right. Fraction of colloid media particles interaction that will result in attachment depends obviously on effectiveness of coagulation. If the particles are very stable, we know or we looked at some of the aspects that will prevent particles from uh, being adsorbed to each other, right. So we are not going to that aspect here, right. Models seems to be predicting that different types of contacts occur in the typical filter design. We will look at the data la uh, later. So colloids will be removed when the significant fraction of these interactions or contacts result in attachment, right. So again, that is a different thing. It just means that not, not all interactions or contacts lead to attachment and removal. So we talked about aspects such as removal by diffusion, removal by interception and removal by what else, sedimentation. Let us see which, what do we say, kind of mechanism predominates at which particle size and such. So here looks like you have transport efficiency and here we have particle diameter, right. So influence of particle size and density on filtration transport efficiency. So what do we have out here? So here is the sum, this is the total if you want to look at it sum 2 and as you can see when the particle size is relatively lesser what predominates diffusion predominates and that is what you see in this zone. Particle size is lesser than diffusion predominates, yes and at the relatively higher particle sizes what do you see? You see that you have sedimentation and then interception, right, sedimentation out here and interception. Again, this is the sum I guess, yes. So sum of only these two and sum of all the particles. So as you can see initially for very small particles, this is the sum with respect to removal efficiency and then later again removal efficiency increases and this part of the removal efficiency is due to interception and sedimentation. For bigger particle sizes, obviously as you can see diffusion uh, relatively lesser role let us see, yes. So again you can see that it is uh, logarithmic uh, scale here, that is something to keep in mind, right. So let us move on. So surface filtration mechanisms screening, obviously this is what I mentioned earlier or straining in a different uh, or used a different word. So when the particle size is greater than the pore size, obviously, right. So here though, I guess I should have pointed this out, we were talking about depth filtration until now, depth filtration. In the context of depth filtration, we looked at sedimentation, we looked at diffusion, we looked at interception, in general the principle based mechanisms and if you are looking at uh, what do we say, other aspects, we also looked at the other five mechanisms let us say, right, which included flocculation and so on and so forth. Here this was with respect to depth filtration, but with respect to surface filtration when we have the ultra filtration or micro filtration mechanisms or uh, membranes, what is the primary uh, mode? It is screening. So for screening to occur what needs to happen? The particle size has to be bigger than the pore size, that is the primary aspect. So that is what you see, this is the water coming in, relatively turbid water coming in and here you have the relatively impermeable or semi permeable membrane. Right, this is my membrane, either the ultra or micro filtration membrane. So the particles will be removed out here and the water that uh, goes through or filters through is called the permeate and this is the reject, let us say, reject or concentrate. Why concentrate? Obviously particles are being removed here and relatively less particles are going through here, right. And then what is going to happen? Obviously the concentration of the particles out here or in this water is going to increase, so that is why we are calling it reject or concentrate, let us say, right, waste stream containing particulate matter and this is the water or the treated water that we are looking at. 
let us look at it in a closer detail. So, surface filtration mechanism right straining or screening this is the usual way and sometimes you can also have coating on wall by small particles and another aspect is that you know after time progresses this uh, straining leads to a case where these finer particles are trapped by the layer here which we are referring to as cake. But in general as you can see the main aspect is screening let us say right. So, that is something to keep in mind again this obviously as you see the thickness of the membrane I think we have the relevant figures it is not going to be very high uh, it is going to be pretty low and obviously that is why we are talking about uh, removal at the surface. So, surface filtration mechanism. So, with respect to when or how you will have the unit process of filtration fit into the bigger what do we say scheme of water treatment plant we will see what are the ways. So, here is the usual way when the turbidity is high and it will vary we know that we are going to add a coagulant so that we destabilize it and then we are going to add a flocculation or not flocculation create conditions or mixing conditions with respect to the G so that your particles flocculate and then you are letting them to settle down and then I am going to send the water through. So, here we have multiple uh, media filter and then the filtrate or permeate or I should not call it permeate the filtered water is what we are using this is the conventional one. But let us say when the water source is such that the raw water turbidity is not very high right it is not very high though and here the case we are looking at is lakes or reservoirs let us say where the water is not moving but it is relatively uh, static right and there with the assumption that the turbidity is relatively low turbidity of the water coming in is low we are going to do away with the sedimentation step and after flocculation you are directly going to have what is this filtration. But one aspect to keep in mind is that even here if you remove sedimentation what is going to happen. So, you have the much bigger particles which will be deposited here or uh, will choke up your relevant uh, filter right very quickly. What happens over time the particles that you are filtering out they will be adsorbed there right. After some time you have to clean it what we refer to as backwash. But if the load of the particles coming in is very high and also even the bigger particles which can be removed have not been removed earlier with a sedimentation step what is going to happen? You will have to you know clean this filter pretty often because your head loss right you will have to have some pressure and that pressure or the head difference between what is coming in and what is going out the head loss will be remarkably high right. So, that is uh, one reason why you will usually have sedimentation prior to filtration especially if the turbidity is relatively high. And again depending on the source of turbidity not source the extent of turbidity or extent of the suspended solids you are even going to do away with uh, flocculation and just coagulation and then you are going to have uh, filtration let us say right. So, that is something in mind. Again different version, but here we see that we have a roughing filter and then filtration ok. So, let us move on. So, granular media filtration let us say. So, we are going to talk about the media here. So, granular media we have the sand typically sand and then underlying layer of gravel right you cannot have only sand and you have the water coming in or this is the standing water. You can see the water coming in I guess and uh, the head of water over the filter this is what you see and then you see that the water will filter through it and come out out here let us say right it will come out out here right. So, the you have the filter media and you have the under drains here this is called uh, this kind of system typically will be a slow sand filter because we are talking about what I always find difficult to pronounce smudge I guess right again you understand what I am referring to. What happens is over time this particular layer will be formed at the top of the sand layer ok. So, here what is happening you have water with high organic content either natural or due to uh, human origins organic content let us say organic matter. Whenever there is organic matter you know that the microbes want to grow. So, you will have this mixture of microbes organic content and this cake being called which you are going to refer as smudge I guess. So, you will even have degradation of some of the organics and you will have removal by straining in this kind of slow sand filter mostly the removal is by straining at the top layer and not by removal across the uh, depth of the sand layer 
But again, uh, keep in mind that that is probably one of the reasons why you it will be a slow sand filter where the rate of filtration is going to be relatively low and also that is why rarely do people use slow sand filters, right. But again, you will have uh, removal across the depth, but usually it is morely on the top, right by straining and how is it that people clean it? People clean it by either replacing or scraping off this layer from time to time, right. So, that is something to keep in mind, but again very rarely used. The MIT courseware says 50 out of 50,000 what do we say filtration units in the US or such are slow sand filters. So, that is something to keep in mind, but again what is the principle here? You have media and then you are going to have uh, a layer developing over the top due to the screening action and this layer will also have microbes uh, developing there. So, different kinds obviously I think this is more or less okay you can even have slow sand filters like this, but again we are moving into the zone of rapid sand filters and such. So, this is a what do we say picture that will give us an idea about what we are looking at. So, water coming in and you see the gully or gullet I guess I think T is silent yes and you have next the filter media, you have the filter media here right and then the graded gravel and after this the water has to be or treated water has to be collected and that is done through these under drain blocks that is what you see out here. And that water obviously flows out through this main yes and that is the main aspect I guess these are the main aspects we have covered. But over time let us say your uh, head loss across the filter is going to decrease or decrease increase. So, you have particles uh, taking up the pore spaces the pores size decreases. So, over time a lot of head is required to take the water through and if it is pressured uh, filter or pressured filtration let us say much more pressure is required right. So, think of this you know water has to flow through this filter. So, you know you can think of energy being lost or more energy being required. So, head lost right head is being lost. So, what do we do people see to it that they backwash it they pump water in the reverse direction backwash right. And then you are going to see to it that this particular filter is suspended and then you are going to pump water out until these adsorbed uh, what do we say particles are going to be removed and your uh, filter media is relatively clean. So, that is what you see and once you do that you have these wash troughs right. So, this is where the wastewater will be uh, collected let us say right because earlier this is the filter but after you pump water in the reverse direction the bed is going to expand yes and then this wastewater is going to be not wastewater the high turbidity water because you are washing your filter is going to be collected in this wash troughs. I think we have a better picture here ok this is what you have uh, actual one. So, you have the filter box mentioned out here this is the gully and this is the filter cell right I think uh, you can see the filter cell out here and the filter bed and I guess the gully too yes and then backwash troughs when it is pumped up this will expand right. You can see that it is expanded or the bed is expanding now earlier water is coming in this direction bed is in this thickness during backwash I am pumping it up. So, bed is going to expand right and then that water during backwash will go through this backwash troughs right. So, that is something that you can see we will come back to more pictures later. So, we were talking about uh, sand or the media and in general in your uh, slow sand filters you will use or can use naturally occurring sand. And in the rapid sand filters or such where the rate of filtration is going to be relatively higher you will typically use process filter sand. And what is the aspect that you can notice you can see that naturally occurs occurring sand again keep in mind this y axis where you have the particle diameter is at logarithmic scale and you see that the particle diameter what do we say ranges over a considerable or includes a different range of or variable considerable range of uh, particle diameters naturally occurring sand. But processed and filtered sand you see that it is relatively more uniform yes that is something that you can see right that is something to keep in mind. And also here I guess it is percentage of media with smaller diameter here it is relatively less and here I guess the range is relatively more with respect to process sand filter right that is something to uh, keep in mind or relatively uniform too, but it depends I guess ok. So, again different uh, pictures out here this is something that we already looked at wash troughs inlet main and I guess you see this filter sand graded gravel filter sand 
graded gravel and then perforated pipes because the water will then pass through these perforated pipes and go through the outlet. During backwash obviously in the reverse direction and this is going to lead to an expansion in your filter bed and then that water will be removed through these wash troughs. And here at the bottom what do we see? Here we had perforated pipes, you can also had, have vitrified clay blocks. So this is what they look like, gravel placed on top of block and here you see the uh, vitrified uh, blocks through which your water is going to be collected here. And here I guess you have something called an IMS cap, right, integrated media system if I am not wrong. So here you see during filtration the water will flow this way and then this way, right. And then this collected water, this is the side view, right, or this is the suction. So it will be collected here. During the backwash though, I am going to pump the water into this and then it is going to clean this and move up through here, let us see, right. So that is what happens. Again, different kinds of, uh, what do we say, uh, water collection mechanisms here, right, perforated pipe, vitrified clay block and then the IMS cap, let us see, right. Okay, filtration cycle, how is it that you know filtration is going to occur, let us just look at that. So first I have to initiate operation, because the filter is clean, there is nothing out there that will block the, or relatively less out there that will block my uh, uh, particles or rather water, so there will be relatively less head loss, let us see, low head loss. And during this time filter will start to ripen, why do we say ripen, we have a figure later in general fruit, raw and ripe fruit, right. So ripe fruit is what you would prefer. We will also see why filter ripening is what you want. I think looking at the figure will help or understand this. So this will lead to increase in or during this time the performance efficiency of the filter will increase. Why is that? Uh, you have the particles coming in with the water. They are going to take up the pore sizes, right or pore spaces, pardon me. And then you can have either flocculation or the pore size is getting smaller. So that will lead to in effect relatively better filtration, right. So filter ripening. So continue operation. After filter ripening you will continue operation. But for how long will you continue this operation? The head loss will increase. Over time head loss will increase the pore size or pores will be what do we say relatively smaller. And this will lead to head loss over time, increase head loss over time. And also second thing is over time the performance efficiency of your filter will also decrease. So the turbidity in your outlet will also keep increasing. So you look at two factors when determining until how long is it you want to run the filter. You will look at the time it takes for your unacceptably level, a high level of head loss to be achieved or time it takes for unacceptably high level of effluent turbidity to be reached. So that is what we look at head loss increases during that period and turbidity removal decreases. When am I going to stop operation? When the head loss is unacceptably high or turbidity is too high? We will choose the smaller of the two. And then after this obviously I cannot throw the uh, filter out or the media out. What am I going to do? I am going to backwash to a clean filter. So hopefully I have this, okay. What do we have here? We have two graphs, effluent turbidity on the y axis and minutes or time I guess and or hours of filter run out here. So you see this in general filter ripening, so 30 minutes to maybe 2 hours typically to 2 hours, yes. And here what do you see effluent turbidity initially high because of the pore sizes and relevant variation. But after the filter or during the filter ripening obviously you can see that the filter efficiency increases considerably. This is within the first 30 minutes or 2 hours, right. The pore spaces are being taken up and you have more efficient filtration. After this 2 hours, over time it runs for pretty, I mean this means a break in time, obviously this is minutes and this is hours. So here you see that the efficiency is pretty good, the effluent turbidity is relatively low, right, the effluent turbidity is low. So what happens after a certain time though now, your relevant turbidity starts increasing and then you are going to stop it, right, time for this particular aspect can be noted. And in general, this period between ripening to run termination can be between 1 to 4 days, 1 to 4 days. Simultaneously what will happen as your filter is being, if to use layman's terms, choked. So here time of filter run on the x axis and on the y axis head loss. So what is happening, head loss is increasing and increasing. 
with clean bed this is the head loss obviously with uh, clean bed too you will always have head loss but not much depending on the uniformity coefficient and such. Head loss through the filter is going to keep on increasing and at a particular time you know it is unacceptably high so I am going to stop it. So, this is one particular time. So, I will look at which time is smaller and then choose that time to backwash let us say right again it depends upon uh, if it is too odd you will also people will also set up uh, regular backwashing cycles but again that has to look at the conditions on the side. So, with that I will end today's session and in the next session we will look at the relevant aspects as in head loss, how do I design the relevant aspects and such. As usual thanking you for your uh, patience I end this session.